Hello, fellow traders. Tis I, the rumpled one, trying my new computer. So let's see how this goes today. It is Tuesday, March 13th, and the year's 2018. Let's talk trading. Enough. We were talking about, you know, you know, when do you get out? When do you say enough is enough? You know, when do you pack it in saying, you know what, I've had enough trading for the day? I mean, it's kind of funny that what goes around comes around, nothing new under the sun, because a lot of people are getting into the minimalist movement, the tiny house movement. You know, the less is more. But the thing is, what you really want to find out is what is enough. Because what is enough for me might not be enough for you. It might be too much for you. So once again, it's, it's a personal thing. And you can either lead, follow, or do your own thing. I prefer doing my own thing. Except when it comes to money and risk management. That too is personal, but if you want to trade, you need to do it. And let's look here. We can see the uh, dollar Canadian is in the uh, previous week's wick zone. It went above the previous week's open and the previous week's midpoint. Once again, a couple horizontal line trades that pay off. And we're 106 pips above the open. And we still have these two Aussie pairs that haven't filled the gap. Looking at the daily chart, you can see the breakout here at the previous day's high. Such a simple trade. Such a simple trade. You've got 81 pips above the daily open. And you can see we've got some very nice ranges here. Wow, look at the pound Canadian, 219 pips. So you can see we definitely had some movement. And here we go, looking at the buy zone. I mean, <laughs> you know, that's the trade we all want right there. 50, 60 pips in less than an hour. There it is. Nice, right? And here you can see we definitely had movement out of the red rat zone. It looks like we went back in, came back out. It's like we want to go back in again. And you can see here, there's the pivot, there's the open, and it just seems like it touched the pivot and bounced right off. But notice this, it hit the weekly pivot. Something to think about. And where, and but the monthly pivot's down here. So sometimes, you can trade, you can look to trade that weekly pivot as a target. And price action, um, really, what can I say that I haven't said every day? <laughs> oh, wow. Just trading the H1 candle color at the line can prove to be profitable. Sometimes just a few pips, sometimes a boatload. But the question is, what's enough? I mean, price moved up here. You were up 10 pips. Did you take it? Maybe it pulled back. Maybe not. In fact, we can take a quick look here. Let's see. How did that play out? Let's go all the way down to M1. Okay, so if you took the long here, it came here, pulled back. Did you get out or did you stay in? Here, we took a long, here, we went long. Here, we were long, it pulled all the way back. Did you stay in or get out? 
as you can see, there's a lot, there's a lot of price action here in this range. And again here, so what you might want to do is when it does that little pullback, you can take half off. This is where you entered, you know, you can move your break even, the break even plus, or you stop the break even plus one, take half off, let the rest ride. You know, you might want to say, well, you know, M1 is a little nerve wracking. Well, you could switch over to M15, or you could even do M5. Right there, your M5. May have taken you out of that trade, but you could have jumped right back in here to pick up another, what, 10, 20 some pips, maybe 30, close to it. But that's how you trade. And here we go. Yesterday, the previous day's five lines, or previous session's five lines. H1 candle color at the line. Sometimes you scratch out or just take a couple of pips. Sometimes you take a boatload. We see it every day, every day. Wick zone. There's that previous session's high. Once again, price doesn't like staying in the wick zone. It just doesn't. And we can see we've got a holo zone trade right here. You can see here. There was a nice opportunity to get long and there's opportunity to get short as I speak. Really not much to see right here at the moment. Uh, candle color, you might want to remember H1 and below. If you get all these the same, now you got a D1 green. So you got an H1 red, so that could be just a pullback. But you can see here, we had pretty much a blow off top happening. You can see that there. So you got, it's failing to make a higher high, so it's probably gonna pull back. So you're trading with the H1, it's gonna come down, or you're gonna wait for it to bottom out and then Resume the day's trade. And if you're looking at the daily chart, see you've got six and a half hours left in the session. So you can see here possible points where it might hit and reverse. But once again, just stick with the H1 candle collar usually profitable let's see and there we go you see that holo trade right there and so the question is when is enough enough you're up about 10 pips right here so you see if this comes back and turns that candle white or bullish that might be the time to take the money off. Another one is right there. If it comes back above that wick, it's maybe time to take the money off the table. I mean, it's really not that difficult. And you know, the funny thing is, I did the holo zone, I think, what was it, a, almost a decade ago? I can't even remember it's been so long, but it seems like it's uh, picked up a life of its own. But that's good. That's why I do these systems. Okay, you see right there, there's possible exit. And it's, it's like the candle's turning bullish. So you see, was that enough? That's the question you have to ask. Was that enough? Maybe, maybe not. You decide what is enough. For me, that would have been a nice little trade there. And you can see here, these candles are all, well, 
out. They were all green. Let's see, we just started a new 30. So sometimes it's hard to say, but you can see right here, you look at the ticks, the, you got the bid above that lowest valley, and you see here how it just moved up. And for those of you wondering how this works, um, let's see, let me put this on M1. You might be able to see it a little bit better here. Okay, as price is moving down, you can see that green star, which is the ask, is moving down. So this is the valley now it's putting in. So this bid, once it crosses above here, now we've got buying going on. That's how price goes up. So price goes down when the ask price gets below the highest bid. Now price is going back down. Okay. Now you might say, well, what do you mean? Well, you see, there's a spread here, right? So you have to overcome that spread. So this price has to get above here for price to be moving up. Because if it doesn't, it's not. Okay, so now it's moving up. So now the ask has, has to get below the highest bid for price to move down. And this is, oh, this is the old spread dots. Um, I think I wrote it as a 2018. So I'll have to uh, update it. Like I said, this is my new computer. So I grab code from a couple different places. <laughs> I got to get everything up to date here. The funny thing is, is that uh, I bought this from Staples and I thought it was defective and I'm still not 100% sure it's it's okay, but it looks like it's functioning fine now. Um, and so I said, hey, you guys need to send me a new computer. I don't want to fool around with the lemon. Well, uh, I got an email and they said something about, uh, we're going to credit your account, send it back, but we don't have any more. <laughs> So it's, it's like, well, wait a minute. So I got to figure out what to do here. So I'm going to keep this computer pretty minimal in case I have to return it. Um, but I think maybe I can work something out with them. I don't know. Haven't really dealt much with staples. Okay, there you go. You see here, once again, the bid came down. But will the ask go above that valley? Yes, it does. So now we're going back up. So you can see how that price action works. And it's pretty good for scalping, pretty good for, for deciding when to enter a trade because if, if that um, bid is not below the valley, it's not price isn't going up. It's just that simple. You see right here, ask went down. I mean, the valley, when the ask goes down, then we get a new um, peak here. So now for price to go up, it has to get up above that valley. It's going down, it has to come down below that peak. So you can see here now price is moving down again. Because if price is stuck between these two, then it's just, uh, it, it's range bound. Not going to get much action. And so you can use this sometimes to pick off a few pips. But the best way to use it is, is you want to pick one direction. In other words, you either want to be a green rat or a red rat and trade it that way until something tells you, okay, I should uh, definitely look to... Uh, trade the other direction that being said remember fellow traders enough is enough and it's not what you trade it's how you trade it the rumple one signing off to go drain the banks